It's now 6.30 on October 1st. I'd like to call to order the His Heritage Preservation Board of October 1st, 2018. Uh, first of all, would everyone who's here please turn your phones to silent? Staff, board members, audience, thank you so much. Um, then I'd like, uh, we'll start at uh, Kim's end. If you just introduce yourself, please. Kimberly Others, Secretary to the Board. Pat Cornell. Laura Milford. Carol Johnson. Cindy Terrapani. Gary Page. Patrick Perez, Board Attorney. Heather Erler. Thank you so much. Um, Madam Secretary, would you call the record? Mrs. Terrapani. Here. Mrs. Johnson. Here. Ms. Page. Here. Ms. Milford. Here. Ms. Cornell. Here. So we have five members present, three is a quorum, so clearly we have a quorum tonight. We have a full house. Uh, first item of the agenda is public comments for anything that's not on the agenda. Anybody would like to come and speak about anything that's not on the agenda? Okay, seeing no one rise, we'll move on to the minutes of September 10th. Any revisions, changes, comments? I had one potential revision, um, and it's, let's see, it's on page three. It says about two-thirds of the way down, Mrs. Mrs. Terrapani indicated that she didn't believe this application complemented the diversity of Tarpon Springs, but I believe it was also the Tarpon Springs and the cemetery. I thought that might be a clarification. That's true. That's really what the intent of my statement was. Okay. I have a motion to make that amendment and uh, approve the minutes. Or any other revisions? We'll get Okay, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make the motion. Accept the amended version. So on page three, paragraph one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. First sentence complemented the diversity of Tarpon Springs and its cemetery. Is that your motion? Yeah. <coughs> no other revisions? Uh, roll call, please. Uh, there was not a second, Chair. I'm sorry. We had a second from uh, Ms. Second. Cornell. A second. second by Mrs. Milford. Any other comment, discussion, comment? All right. We'll have a roll call, please. Ms. Cornell. <coughs> yes. Ms. Milford. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Page. Yes. Mrs. Terpani. Yes. The motion passes five to zero. Uh, Mr. Perez, would you uh, do the quasi judicial announcement, please? Yes, and please excuse me, I lost my voice over the weekend. So, <clears throat> This is a quasi judicial proceeding where the Heritage Preservation Board acts in a quasi judicial rather than a legislative capacity. At a quasi judicial hearing, it is not the board's function to make law, but rather to apply law that has already been established. In a quasi judicial hearing, the board is required by law to make findings of fact based upon the evidence presented at the hearing and apply those findings of fact to previously established criteria contained in the Code of Ordinances in order to make a legal decision regarding the application before it. The board may only consider evidence at this hearing that the law considers competent, substantial, and relevant to the issues. If the competent, substantial, and relevant evidence at the hearing demonstrates the applicant has met the criteria established in the Code of Ordinances, then the board is required by law to find in favor of the applicant. By the same token, if the competent, substantial, and relevant evidence at the hearing demonstrates the applicant has failed to meet the criteria established in the Code of Ordinances, then the board is required by law to find against the applicant. Are there any members of the board tonight wishing to disclose any ex parte communication or conflicts of interest? Well, anyone uh, speaking tonight, mm -hmm. um, all applicants or anyone giving any testimony, please stand to be sworn in. If you think you might speak, it's better just to be sworn in. And please raise your right hand. <clears throat> please stand and raise your right hand. <clears throat> Do you swear from the testimony you're about to give tonight is the truth, the whole truth, and I think about the truth? Yep. So sworn. Thank you, Mr. Perez. Our first application is application 18-93. It's at 58 Reed Street, a demolition of a one-car wood frame mm -hmm. garage, uh, it's, and it is a contributing structure. Uh, Mr. Weiler. Uh, thank you. Again, this is an application for a one-story detached garage that is located in the rear of the property at 58 Reed Street. Um, it is listed as a contributing structure. The structure on the property that is the primary structure is actually a contributing but altered structure. Um, <clears throat> at this time, the, the staff has reviewed this application and finds that there's been substantial uh, deterioration of the structure. Uh, the, at this time, the 
applicant is in the code enforcement process because the structure has been deemed by the code enforcement um, division to be dilapidated. As a result of that, staff is recommending um, demolition of the structure, recognizing that there are other examples that are probably better examples of um, contributing uh, secondary structures in the district that have been maintained. At this time, this structure has a lot of deterioration. The doors and the windows are missing. They're, ply they're covered with plywood um, to keep it at least secure. And there's a lot of uh, deterioration of the roof structure. It's uh, rusted. Um, there's a little bit of a lean to the wood, to the, to the structure itself, um, like it's going to fall. And there is uh, missing boards uh, throughout the, 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 the uh, exterior of the fabric of the building. So with that, um, staff is recommending um, removal of the structure with one condition, um, and that condition is that the applicant is responsible for obtaining all the required permits for uh, demolition of the structure. And I can answer any questions that you might have. All right, before we go to the public hearing, um, see if any of the uh, board members have any comments or questions. Um, I have some questions, but I think they're for the applicants. So, okay, and would the applicants for this application please come forward? Could you pull your mic a little closer? Sure. Thank you. Having okay. trouble hearing me? Sorry about that. Better. Yes, if you please come to the to the microphone and as you're coming, um, I'll just mention um, we do operate somewhat informally. We want you to. Um, there's no time limit on how long you want to tell us or anything you want to tell us about your application. <laughs> Uh, we do ask though that you give your name and address for the record because we do, are required to keep a good record of these meetings. Our goal is for this process is to be easy and transparent, but we do need your name and address for the record, please. Sure. It's Anastasia Conjure, 7121 Arboretum. That up White. to you. <laughs> there you go. In Newport Ritchie. Okay. My name's Ella Denise Hurtis, and my address is 5116 Beacon Hill Drive, Newport Ritchie. Okay. And are you the applicant and owner? So is that yes. correct? Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, the only question I have is, uh, I think Heather just mentioned it, I, I just need to get a permit, and is there a time frame that I have to have this done as far as the demolition of the garage? Um, well, the, if, the, if the approval by this board is approved, there generally is a time frame, and it, um, the staff has recommended three years. I personally would like to have a shorter time period on that. And then okay. I don't really know that the time frames of your code enforcement issue, you need to check that with code enforcement as to what your time frame is to comply. Okay. Okay. Do you have any questions? Mm -hmm. I don't have any other questions. Do you have any questions for us? I, I, I had a few and then perhaps the board does too. Um, okay. How long have you owned the property? Oh, well, my father owned it all his life and we took it over in 2000. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. What year? 2005. 2005? Yeah. Is there a tenant there now? It looks no. like it's vacant. Mm -mm. Uh, no, it's been vacant for eight years. The house as well? Mm hmm. Yeah. Just out of curiosity, <laughs> why <laughs> it's been vacant so long? We just haven't. I mean, we were dealing with my father and his illness, and. I see. Yeah, that wasn't something that was on our agenda to do. <laughs> okay, I didn't mean to get personal. I was just kind of wondering. Um, I guess my concern is, um, and, and I, we have a provision in our code that people are supposed to, not just in the city, but there's a special provision in the preservation ordinance about maintaining historic properties because um, people who, you know, don't want to maintain their property and then let it, they, it's called demolition by neglect. If you just let the building deteriorate, you don't maintain it over time when there's obvious certain kinds of maintenance you need to do for wood structures. On a regular basis you have to paint it you have to repair boards i mean you know that's just part of owning a home and a, and a property and when that isn't done it, it becomes demolition by neglect which is what i see that we have here today and these these garages are there's garages there's other outbuildings there's garage apartments all over the historic district and they really contribute to the character of the district and so not only am i concerned about losing a garage although there are others i will certainly admit but the, it's the group of them that creates a synergy that creates that character and now that you tell me the house is vacant um 
I'm doubly concerned, and maybe you can reassure me that we're not going to have you guys coming back and asking to demolish the house. Oh, no, no. It's no. Actually, right now, we're under the, we're trying to get everything maintained and fixed up and um, probably sell it, or I don't know what the, the long-term goal is, but right now, that's what we're doing. Okay. I'll, I'll take your word for it on that, because I'm be very unhappy if you're back here wanting to mm -hmm. demolish the house. I understand. Life. No, that we're not doing that. Uh, my only other suggestion is um, I personally am not going to support a demolition. I think it's demolition by neglect, um, and I'm not going to set a precedent to do that. For me personally, I don't think it meets the criteria, um, but if you all do uh, move to approve it, I would suggest that we, instead of making it valid for three years, that we shorten that time period up so that um, there is an incentive to the applicant to you know do what they need to do and get the building you know, moved off the site, demolished, however it gets um, off. So I would suggest that that gets shortened up significantly, <coughs> maybe to a year. Um, that's just a suggestion. Board comments? Do you have a time frame for when you're going to take it down? No, I'm just, I'm just, that was just a question I wanted to know is if we had a time frame, like a month or two, you know, finances are tight, and um, that's, you know, one of the reasons why I asked that. I can somewhat address that. That will be that would actually be purview of the code enforcement board. They would determine that as part of the violation process. Right now, based on this application, um, there's a stay of those proceedings until this this situation is decided. Um, should you choose to um, demol should you choose to allow them to demolish it, they have to go through the permit process. So there's there's some steps they have to take. Should you choose to not let them demolish it, there are, again, some steps that they're going to have to take. So as a result, those proceedings would ultimately, that will, that will happen after this, will ultimately determine what that time frame is as far as that type of thing. Now, if you set a time frame that is different, obviously that board will be made aware of that time frame as well so that they, so that they can perform their duties as well inside that time frame. Thank you, Mr. Roller. Mr. Roller, do you happen to know, can a demolition permit be issued to a property owner or does that require a contract? I kind of think it requires a contractor, but I'm not sure. It, it, it usually depends on whether or not it's an owner of a property that's going to be living on that property uh, in perpetuity. Given the situation, I don't know that it would qualify as an, as an owner, for an owner to get this. In this case, they probably are going to have to have a contractor, but that's something that the building official would ultimately make the call on. Would you repeat that again? I didn't hear the last about the contractor. Um, uh, because of the situation where they're not living on the property, um, usually in order to do things by as a homeowner, you have to live on the property for so long. And ultimately, um, the whether or not they need a contractor or not is something that the building official would determine. So he would say, yes, you can do it as, a, a, as an owner, or no, you would need to get a contractor. He will make that final call. Other questions? Uh, I was just or? curious if you'd looked at the cost of repairing and. I had a contractor give me an estimate, and he would he he told me, and I think it's in the paper that I submitted. It's going to be at least thirty thousand dollars to repair the garage. I think you better get a different contractor. <laughs> <laughs> that, I mean, yeah. that's wildly wildly yeah, estimated, in my opinion. I and I'm not a, I'm not a contractor. I just want to say for the record, I'm personally not a contractor but I've done a lot of renovation work and for a one-story wood garage it seems really high but <coughs> I didn't I, I'm sorry but I don't see that what I saw that you had from the contractor was a letter yes I have a copy of it if you don't have demolition. it for Mr. Larson construction recommending right. that um, says it's it's in poor condition structurally unsafe not built of course the current building code well we knew that because it's built 70 years ago yeah, I don't um, see where he put the, the cost down, but that's what he told me verbally. Yeah, I don't. Okay, more questions for the applicant or comments? I have a question, but it's because of a new board member. Do you have questions for the applicant? No. Okay. Any other questions for the applicant? Okay, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Now we'll go to board discussion. Okay. Ms. Terrapini, when you were saying that um, it didn't meet the I want to where, where did you see that in here so that I can understand that directions of what where it's lacking um sure is it under 
I think it's a little bit of yeah. most of these criteria in the staff report. They she does list the criteria for a demolition permit, which is slightly different than for um, a, re a renovation okay. um, certificate of appropriateness. So on page one, it starts with um, we're supposed to consider the historic architectural cultural significance of the building. Um, clearly, it is a contributing st structure. Isn't that what it is? Or contributing? Yeah, the garage is a contributing, so that's the highest level. Um, contributing to the district, the house itself, which we're not talking about, um, is contributing altered. Um, the importance, number two, it's kind of struck me, the importance of the building to the ambiance of the district and the patterns of land use. Traditionally, we've had garages, one-story garages, two-story garage apartments throughout the district, and it really does add a lot to the ambiance. There's also outbuildings. Um, I think the Greeks would call them kam kamarakis. Um, it's like a outbuilding with a little living area um, which is this is not that of course we don't know that because we haven't been inside um, number three difficulty of reproducing it I don't think that's the issue I think it, the materials there are pretty much wood materials that could be easily <coughs> obtainable um, it's clearly not the last remaining example I don't I'm not suggesting that it's one of others um, number five I'm not really sure what that criteria is supposed to mean, future utilization of the site. Um, it's still going to be residential, so you would, you know, a lot of folks do like having that garage. Number six, reasonable measures can be taken. I don't think we really know the answer to that because we didn't have a real analysis of, okay, what's the, there's some cost to demolish a building. There's going to be some cost to renovate. Well, we don't have the two costs to be able to say whether it's reasonable or not. Could we ask for that? If we could, I would think to be able to make that decision. Um, whether it's capable of earning an economic return, this would mostly be for buildings that are rented, um, you know, a commercial building or an apartment or something like that. So I don't think number seven necessarily applies in this case. Um, so, I mean, I, I'm not trying to say that this is, um, you know, the individually the most important building in the historic district but the reason we have a district is that it's the group it's it's the it's the combination of all of these buildings together um, and, and the fact that you know it looks kind of looks like demolition you know by neglect over time and we have it's not the only site in Tarpon that we have that situation I'm not trying to not suggesting that um, Chair, can I clarify one thing? Sure. Um, just, um, I know in the staff report, I believe it was said that the staff recommends uh, the, if you do choose to approve it, the certificate of approval will be three years. Mm -hmm. That's it's not just staff recommendation; it's based on your code mm -hmm. that a certificate of approval would be valid for three years. But we can make a shorter time. Frame. I believe you can. I believe you can put some type of conditions, but I just wanted to clarify that that okay. your code is that that's the baseline of a certificate of approval is three years. Yeah, I think it used to be one year, and that proved <clears> to be too short. Um, and so lots of cases were coming back through, as I recall. So, I mean, generally, I think three years is kind of a good time period, but if there's an interest in kind of moving this forward and making, you know, progress with the applicant. Um, and the other option, like you mentioned, is we could ask them to provide information about, um, you know, a, a comparison of those costs. I personally would like to see that because it being in a historical district, I don't want to lose anything that can be repaired. Um, I just don't want to see that done. I agree. How would we move forward with, with that suggestion? Would there be a motion? Um, I think we could continue it to allow them okay. to well, supplement their application. If, if the applicant likes to, I mean, if they don't it, want it's to, it's their they... application, and they can they have the right if they want like to have a an answer tonight. So. Well, if they don't, if they are not, if they don't are unwilling to provide the information, um, then there's no sense continuing it. You're correct. Right. <laughs> so I guess we need to ask the applicant, um, and maybe one of y'all or both, could you come back to the podium, please? Don't mind. <clears throat> I think you can see there's some interest by the board in having some more information about the cost to demolish the building versus the cost to repair it, um, replace the wooden boards, replace the windows. Okay. Would you all be interested in 
in uh, letting us continue that case that you could get that information or yeah I can do that uh, the only thing the only problem that I'm gonna run into then is code enforcement because well, code enforcement it doesn't give me much time to work with well if so. the cases continue mr. Weiler wouldn't the code enforcement board state actions be stayed until this decision is is uh, finalized through this board that's something I'd have to um, talk to the code enforcement officer um, about I mean if you want to uh, uh, to provide the additional information to this board um, then that's certainly something that I can relay to him I, I can make no guarantees on that but I would uh, I would assume that they would um, defer to this to this board you know in your next hearing if it's going to be uh, next month or whenever it's going to be I would assume that you're planning on um, giving her a month. Is that correct? I would prefer to do the shortest time period possible if, okay. if, if you think you can get your contractor or a contractor to provide those two cost estimates. But it's up to you if you think you need two months. I mean, you yeah, tell me. Yeah, I think I need a little bit longer. I, I do have a lot of stuff going on in my personal life, sure. and it, it's kind of difficult to meet a one month time frame. Okay. So. So can we get a date certain for this, just so we don't we do the, do the re-advertising for that? I, I'm just trying to save us spending more money on advertising because I know that with the applicant they pay for that. So, so the next so this is today is October first, so the two months would be December third. Okay. Okay. So, so what you're wanting is an estimate on repairing the right, garage two estimates. One and is the demolition of the garage. Right, repairing okay. it um, okay. to, to its historic character or demolishing it because clearly there's there's cost to both. Right. And I think that's the comparison that we're that we're looking for. Okay. And I would suggest that maybe just for your own benefit that um, that you talk to the building department and find out uh, whether or not what kind of a contractor has to issue you know be issued the demolition permit. Clearly, we know that a renovation permit has to be a contractor, but I would just to satisfy myself, I would make sure about what's required in terms of a contractor for uh, demolition my my guess is that probably requires a contract okay because for all, all sorts of obvious reasons right, right. okay thank you all right we'll take a vote on this new um, and then we would right so the idea would be that she would no, uh, get these two estimates come back on the dis for the December 3rd agenda it would be in our agenda packet the new information and then we would consider that information um, again I mean consider the application but with the new information does that sound like I thought we had to vote on this application today the if I'm listening to the board and the applicant the applicant wishes to continue it okay until December 4th. until December 3rd so if you would like to make for the record you one of you can make a motion to allow the continuance and then you could just clarify that that would be fine but it, it is the applicant's decision so, Chair, if, if you would like to entertain a motion like that for the record, you're, you're welcome to. Okay. So we could either act on it today. Oh, wait a minute. Or we may. Wait a minute. Could you, I'm sorry, ma'am, but could you just come back to the podium so we can capture you on tape? Yes, my question is. Right, could you give your name again for the record? Ella please? Denise Hurtis. Thank you, Ms. Hurtis. My question is, the garage never had windows the frames with the glass and it never had real doors it was just cutouts where the windows were and where the doors were if we have to replace that are we talking about having to go in and reframe for windows and a reframe for a door I'm kind of confused if you mean you, you would just have a hole and there was no That's glass all in it? that is there was a hole for the window and the door there's pictures of it as of right now, we have it boarded up where the windows and the doors are with plywood. Um, I, I think it's really difficult of us to, to answer that question without being on the site. I think you need to try and get your contractor to figure out if, if there were was glass in the windows and what kind of a door was there. I mean, are you saying that, I mean, it had to have been a garage door, right, for the car to go in? There, it's not for a car. A car. Okay, so it really I wasn't I think a, it ever was for a car so maybe it was a I think it was just, just for storage from okay but you had to get in it somehow so there had to be like a re uh, just a regular person door right Stacy I don't think there was ever a door on there I can't imagine a building would have been built without it typically would have had some kind of door it may not have it may not be evident right now 
um, today where it sits, but I would, I mean, a, your contractor, a good contractor who understands old buildings should be able to figure out, yes, there definitely was an opening here and here's where the door that people walked in as they, you know, stored their boxes and whether there were windows or not, if the windows were, cut, you know, if the side of the building was just cut open later, that could be that there never were a window, but there, it's not for us to decide whether that is the fact or not. I would suggest you talk to the contractor when it comes out and try and figure that out. Because that'll be part of his analysis as to what the cost to to repair is. If you're just repairing the the rotted wood and putting in a new door for people to walk in and out, that's you know one set of costs. If there's windows, then he's going to have to add you know glass. Okay, does that make sense? I know. Okay. <laughs> like I said, it's not really for us to <coughs> sit here and decide what was or wasn't there, but you your contractor should be able to help you. Okay, so now we're back to the board. So, we want to entertain a motion to continue for to the December 3rd meeting, uh, pending the applicant submitting additional information? Yes. Okay. Can we have a motion to that effect, please? Yes. I'd make the motion for the extension till December the 3rd. So, it was moved by uh, Ms. Milford, seconded by Ms. Johnson to continue the case to December 3rd with the understanding that the applicant is going to submit new information and then we'll evaluate it on December 3rd. Yeah. If I'm fine with the staff recommendations as it is, mm -hmm. then do I just not? Could you pull your mic closer to so vote I against can the motion? Sure. That's what that's what sure. I want to know. If I'm if I'm fine with the application as it stands and I I'm not as it is and no I don't see a need for continuance. Then you would vote then against I the vote. motion. Okay. Right. You, you, you then can. you vote no. You okay. can. It's up to you. You can vote against the motion. However, the way I interpret your procedure is the applicant is the only one that can decide okay. that they want to continue it, and they have. I really don't think you need the motion, but for the record, you can, if that makes sense. So, yes, you can vote against the motion, but... But if we have an application here, somehow it has to get moved on. So mm -hmm, I think the correct. board needs to make them. That's make, fine. make a motion or not. I mean, I'm not presupposing how the mo vote is going to come out. I'm just saying that's the motion that's on the floor. So. Yes, there has been a motion, so you, you do need to vote. There's been a motion in a second, so you need to vote on this. Okay, any further discussion on the motion? All right, so the motion is, to, you want to read what you have, Kim, to make sure you've got it? Um, motion to continue t until December 3rd. Okay, so roll call. Ms. Cornell? No. Ms. Milford? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Ms. Page? No. Mrs. Terrapani? Yes. So the motion is three to two, is that correct, Madam Secretary? Yes. The motion three to two passed to extend to December 3rd um, with the understanding the applicant's going to bring in additional information. Okay. Thank you so much. I'm going to move on to the next case. Uh, this is case number 18-94105 Banana Street to re-roof a single-family home, which is a contributing structure. Uh, Ms. Erwana? Again, this is um, a replacement roof uh, from replacing composite shingled roof to a metal roof um, for a wood frame craftsman style home. Uh, essentially, this is not the original roof uh, for the home. It's on a historic home. This is a replacement um, holistically of the fabric of that roof. Um, at this time, it's consistent with several of the um, other craftsman style homes in the area that have had uh, metal roofs replaced on them. As a result, there, there's no change to the rafter style or any of the other defining fixtures of the roof um, uh, material. It's just literally the material fabric is being changed off the roof. Um, with that, staff is recommending um, approval with the one condition that the applicant is responsible for obtaining any of the required permits. Uh, I just had a question. Do we have a, a sample of the roof material? There's the applicant here, maybe he or she has? The applicant is not here, okay. and I do not believe we have a sample of the roof material. Okay, questions to the staff before we open the public hearing? OK, 
Okay, we're going to open the public hearing. Is there anyone who wishes to speak on this application? 105 Banana Street. Sir, were you here? Did you get sworn in? Okay. You can come to the podium and then raise your right hand. <clears throat> you swear from the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. So sworn. Uh, Andrew Proper, 307 Bay Street. I was just looking at the uh, address and the property, and that house is listed as a uh, 1905 home. I'd say it's definitely historical and not uh, wasn't represented properly in your description. It is contributing structure, isn't it? Yeah. Did I miss here, possibly? There are, uh, Wilder, is it, it, a contributing it is a contributing structure. It has a non-historic roof on it, and that material is a composite shingle that is being removed and being replaced with a metal roof. The historic home is there. All of the historic features of the roofing and the rafter tails are being, are being retained. The only change is the exterior fabric of the roof will be no longer composite shingle. It will be metal roof. Okay, so I'm sorry, I misheard get, then. Yeah, so the, the structure is contributing. What she's saying is that the roof is not the original roof. No big surprise. <clears throat> okay. um, that's, what, that's what she's trying to say. Sorry for the interruption. No problem. Comments, questions? Board members? What, what did you ask about roof? I asked if we had the roofing material. Usually the applicant or his contractor brings the roofing material to the meeting. Right. The only reference to it I saw was under that summary report on the first page. Is that correct? That it is, is a metal roof. That is correct. We don't have pictures of it. We don't. <laughs> we know why the applicant is not here, or his representative, or his or her representative. I do not know why the applicant is not here. They were notified. No one from Aries Roofing is here either. On page two of four, it also mentions a little bit about the roofing have, material. I don't have anything. Say again, Laura. On page two of four, uh -huh. um, it description of proposed work. There is some reference to the roofing material. We did re nail the deck. And then it talks about, but it's not a lot of information. Metal roof panels, I don't know. I mean, you know, in the past, we, we have approved metal roofs. I don't think that's yes. the issue. I mean, it's not for me. Um, and I hate to hold somebody up, especially if they're not changing the structure of the roof, but I really think they need to give us a picture of the material, a cut sheet or something of the roof, I mean, and or bring it to the meeting, and they did neither. Um, I, mean, I don't know what you guys, you guys feel comfortable moving it forward, and I don't see anything wrong with what, doing what you're saying, ask for that information. The future? Yeah. The, mm. uh, I think we should know the material, for sure. You want to see it before yeah. you Okay, um, then I guess we need to ask that this be continued and the applicant's not here, but we don't have a complete application with the material that's to be done. I don't know what else to do. Your other option is to vote on it. You can vote it, approve it, or deny it. Then the applicant has to reapply, pay a new fee. And Just giving you your options. Okay, I mean, I, I hate to do that because I, I would like to make it simple and like to make it so they can bring the material to our next meeting, whatever next month, November's meeting, or provide it to the, provide it to put in our packet. I'm happy to, I personally will take a cut sheet. Are you guys happy with that? Or you want to see? Say that again. A cut sheet, you know, uh, yes. the, yeah. the sample from the yes. roofer. Yes. It um, doesn't. Or bring the actual, sometimes they bring the material to the meeting because then it's a big piece. And sometimes they give us the sample from the manufacturer. I think either one we'd be happy with. One, either that, one I'm happy with. Either one we'd be happy with. I don't even see a, 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 a quote or anything from Aries Roofing in here. I just see the description of proposed work mm -hmm. from the applicant. So <coughs> even, you know, if there was some description from the roofing company, but I do not see that unless I'm missing it. No, I don't, we don't have. Well, it does say 
excuse me, it does say that they are asking for an unpainted fi finish. An ordinary um, metal roof with an unpainted finish. Was that in the staff report or was that in the application? It's in the uh, staff summary on the first page. Hey members, what would you like to do? Well, I, point of order, can we vote with a caveat or pending uh, the board approval of that? Of the material uh, after we see a cut sheet or no 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 you can you can approve it with conditions or you can deny it or you can continue it but at that I don't believe that's a proper way to approve it okay you could I suppose if you wanted to approve it and allow the staff to make to look at the material and make sure yes it's a unpainted metal <laughs> I guess that's what you well, my, my concern is all unpainted roofs are not created equal. The one on the house that's next door to us in the hurricane <coughs> was like just blew right off because mm -hmm. it was such a thin, nonsense metal roof. So, I mean, the material itself, it was thin and it was, I mean, I don't know who applied it, but mm -hmm. it was put on some way. Okay. It was unpainted, but it, it wasn't a quality roof. So. Okay. Um, Anyone like to make a motion? Want to take a stab at this? Well, I'd make a motion that the it be accepted as written. Okay, Ms. Cornell moves that we. So you're saying to approve the application as yes. written? To approve. Okay. Is there a second to that motion? Okay. The motion dies for lack of a second. Is there another motion? I think it would be something like continue it for one month and uh, ask the staff to convey to the applicant that um, we would like to either see a manufacturer's uh, sample at the meeting or a ma manufacturer's sample page. I guess that's, is that not what we're telling mm -hmm. us with? Yeah, but the attorney said that only the applicant decided they want to continue. So I don't know why we couldn't, you know, say it's incomplete and give them another option to, to complete their application in a month. Yeah. I just say for people to have to reapply, the yeah, notice has to go out again, you know, starts the whole clock all over again. I just say let them. Is there some reason why we can't do that? Mr. I'm sorry, I, I didn't hear the question. I apologize. Is there a reason why we could, since we don't have the applicant here, but we have an incomplete application, I think the consensus of the board is to continue it to allow the applicant to make it complete with either a sample brought to the meeting or a manufacturer's, uh, um, I call it a cut sheet, that's not the right term, sample sheet of the material to be used, submitted, submit that to the staff so that it, we could review it then at our November meeting. I, I believe your procedures allow for you to continue it. Okay. Thank you. We have no applicant here to ask whether or not he would agree Correct. or not. Typically, so. the applicant will be the one continuing okay. it. Okay. So now is there a motion? Uh, I move we continue the application until next month uh, so that the applicant can complete the application with, with clar clarification of the material. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Seconded by Mrs. Page. So uh, let me sure continue to next month, which would be November 5th. You need the exact date? November 5th. 5th? Allow the applicant to complete his application with say it again, the material. Uh, with clarification as to the <coughs> material. Clarification as to the material. Okay. Any further discussion by the board? Roll call, please. Ms. Cornell? Yes. Ms. Milford? Okay. Yes is to vote to continue it? Yes. 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 Ms. Page? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Ms. Terrapani? Yes. The motion is approved 5 to 0 to continue it to November 5th. Mr. Weiler, I trust you'll explain to the applicant our concern. I don't think it's a big concern about a metal roof. It's just a concern about the specific roof that he's proposing. Okay, let's see. And our last case for this evening is case 18-105. 119 South Spring Boulevard. It is a contributing structure. Uh, Ms. Erweiler? 
thank you. This um, particular project has had a very complicated history. <laughs> some of you were here from the beginning and some of you are recently coming to this. Um, essentially, the applicant uh, purchased this home and has been trying to do some renovations um, to really, it started as just adding a second bathroom on the second floor. And as renovations sometimes do, they've kind of gone through a couple different iterations. This is, I hope, the last iteration where we've now kind of settled on with at your last meeting um, on this, I believe was June um, of this year, where you guys talked about the upstairs and what that re what that actual renovation space will actually look like and you approve that. And they're satisfied with that. What they would really like to discuss tonight is really just the windows itself. Um, they had asked for um, triple windows across and now what they've liked to do is, is change that and um, look for single windows, which is explained in your staff report what they're looking to do um, on the first floor and the second floor. They're looking to match the windows. Now the opening sizes are a little bit different on the lower level and a little bit smaller on one of the sides on the upper level and that's called out um, in the materials that have been provided. Um, I can have the applicant come up. She's here tonight. She can kind of explain really what she's trying to accomplish, um, which is probably, she's probably better at explaining it, what she's trying to accomplish than I'm going to be since it's her home. So before we go there, so the second set of 11 by 17s, is that what the proposal is? Or is that what was approved before? I'm trying to figure out what we're voting on tonight. And it's not really clear. Neither of them have dates on them. Yeah, this second one is 5-5. Five, five. No, well, this looks like what what was originally approved. I don't know. Um, could you come up this, and... This is... That, I think, was what was approved. Okay. So this one, it shows kind of them uh, ghosted out on the top floor of what's proposed? Yes. So that's the second. That was the second... The second 11 by 17 in the pack. Have with the window at the, on the second floor is kind of, there's one window in the middle, I think. Maybe she can explain. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Would you give your name and address for the record? Elizabeth place? Parker, 119 South Spring Boulevard. Okay. Thank you. Enlighten us, please. So, <laughs> we were planning to change our bedroom into a bathroom and, and put this new space as a bedroom. So we were going to have a bank of windows at the end, three, three four windows at the end and now we've decided much simpler to just make that the bathroom the new construction so uh, we do not want all those windows in our bathroom <laughs> so we have less windows what we're asking for is two small ones one will be in the shower we don't want it large and the other one there's one behind the toilet, above the toilet, that would be small, on the other side. And downstairs, there's a small window, but I think that was there in originally. I think the downstairs is the same, as, as far as I know. And am I correct that both of these um, south and the west elevations are not visible from the street? Correct. Or is the east, for that matter? Really? It's the east. The east and the south. south. The west Neither are, are visible from the street. And the east, the west side is pretty far back, so you have a hard time seeing from the street. I'm sorry. The east side is visible. This addition is on the west side. When you're coming down the street, you can see the east side. East side. But you cannot, this addition is totally on the other side of the house. Okay. So you cannot see it from the east side. Because you're not on a corner and it'd be kind of hard to see through all the trees. Okay. No. Okay. Questions? Comments? So the windows will still match the color and style of the other windows? Yes. And that's all that's being changed in this house? That's correct. That's all, the only thing that's being changed in this application from what we approved before is the windows. Going to fewer windows and smaller windows. Yes. Is that a yes. correct? Correct. Summary? 
Other questions? Comments? Anything else you'd like to add? That's it. Good. Does anybody from the audience like to speak on this item? Please come forward. Okay, seeing no one rise, well, it's to the board and your pleasure. I move we approve the application as presented. Ms. Johnson moved that we approve it as presented. Is there a second? I second that. Is that Ms. Uh, Cornell? Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, further discussion? No. Any for comments? Call the roll, please. Ms. Cornell? Yes. Ms. Milford? Yes. Ms. Page? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Ms. Terrapani? Yes. Uh, motion is approved five to zero. Just be sure and get your building permit. Okay, staff comments? None at this time. Anything we need to know, Mr. Curtis? No, no comments. Okay. Board comments, questions, concerns? Okay, so we have for next month, we have, or the next meetings, we've got one continued item for November, one continued item for December, and then whatever else applications come in. So we might have a full agenda, but everyone will be here. Um, just a thought, too. Uh, uh, I got a call today, maybe some of y'all did, too, from Kim asking, just checking that I was going to be here today. And I noticed when I went back and looked at the um, email that Pat, McNeese sent out and she said right in the email board member please respond so um, when you as soon as you get that maybe just you know do a quick email back that yep you'll be there or no you have a conflict or something just so that she knows that we have a forum um, you know we understand if something happens in the meantime and you can stick. dog dies terrible <laughs> but I would think it would help the staff to know that for sure that we had a forum and as a pro tip it's it best practice to just reply and not reply all Thank you. Yes, because of government and sunshine, just reply direct, just reply to Pat, um, and that'll um, it's the best way to do it. Good. Thank you. Any thank other you. any other comments or questions? Anything else to come before the board? Okay, we are adjourned at the seven sixteen. Thank you. <laughs>